All right, Battletech fans, Travis here. We're gonna get a little special episode today. This is gonna be kind of experimenting with an idea I had and I shared with the Battletech CCG Facebook group um, about going through my kind of custom car design process uh, in a little video for you guys. And so that's what I'm gonna do here um, and uh, take you along. This is definitely an experiment for me. Um, I'm playing with kind of screen recording, kind of splicing things together. Hopefully this isn't gonna be super long either, so it'll take it easy on myself in the editing room, but I think it will be fun and it'll take you a little bit behind the scenes for some of the custom stuff that I've been doing lately for the Battletech CCG. So um, let's cut here. Here is, uh, so we're in Photoshop. This is where kind of the magic happens here. We have the dire wolf, and uh, I actually talked about this in my conversation with Peter and Terry, uh, the 97, 98 world champions for the Battletech trading card game. But I've been kind of revisiting this. Um, my formula for overheat is a little bit off, is a little conservative, um, and uh, I've been using kind of for every seven heat over the capacity of heat sinks, that that is a, a point of damage for the overheat. And uh, reading through a, a document, I can't remember who uh, the producer was, but somebody had made a document kind of breaking down the card costs um, from a long time ago. And uh, they had come up with five, so it's actually five. And I knew that I was kind of being a little bit too safe on the damage side. I knew I'd have to revisit at some point, but I'm gonna go ahead and kind of go with that five. Now I've got to go through all the cards that I've done already and kind of read through them. And the Dire Wolf is one of them. But uh, for uh, today, we're just gonna kind of rename this file. All right, so we're ready to go. So first thing, and this is the most important here, is that these cards, I'm doing this because I want cards that look cool, all right? That is number one, all right? So if there's no art, there's no cool art, then I'm not really motivated to make a custom card, all right? So let's, uh, let's navigate on over to find a piece of art. Basically this large gallery of Battletech art that I've done exhaustive searches of the internet trying to find uh, cool illustrations that I can build cards with. And now I've built lots of cards already. I think I'm up, I'm over 80 cards. And so a lot of the really great pieces of art I've already snagged. I've snagged this dragon. That was actually one of the first ones. I haven't done anything from this. The art's a little kind of messy on that for a card. Um, this is definitely on the list, but I actually don't even know what mech that is. I'll have to look that up. Um, I actually was talking about the Burrick here in the Facebook group. Um, the Akuma, I'm kind of wishy-washy on that on that art. I'll probably do it at some point. Um, and then there's a lot of art here that may not be great for mechs, but it'll be great for like command cards and mission cards. So I say that a lot of the HBS Battletech art is uh, really awesome and <laughs> really well suited for that. And so I've got a couple kind of picked out for potential cards. But um, I will say that building a mech is fairly straightforward. Every mech in the game is statted out on tabletop. The, the challenge is really just kind of transferring that to the, um, <laughs> to the card, um, but uh, the mission commands actually take a bit of knowledge about the game, and I am still an office at this, all right? I just picked it back up earlier this year, so uh, getting good mission commands uh, will be another challenge, but uh, awesome picture out of the Atlas. I've made that card already. This is one of my favorite custom cards that I've made so far, the, uh, the Catapult K2K, um, I believe is the one that I used for that, but let's go in this direction because there was one I remember seeing that I want to build a card for. So this is my Captain Natasha Kerensky I talked about in my other video with Mark and Gustav, and uh, that'll be a custom card that's gonna be available. I'll send out to people on the Patreon, uh, Patreon for, uh, for Renegade HPG. So if you want some of these custom cards kind of sent out to you as rewards later this year, uh, kind of hop onto that and support the channel a little bit. Um, but, uh, but yeah, this is a uh, one that I really wanna use, but actually the, um, the size of this file is not quite big enough for what I need, but uh, Martha Pride, got a template for that laid out. Um, this one I've made, I've made the Shadowhawk, I think it's 5M, I've made a Bushwhacker, I love the Bushwhacker that I made, I didn't use either of those arts. Um, this one I made and actually shared, I'm pretty sure I shared that uh, maybe with the Facebook group, maybe with the, uh, the Patreon, I'm not positive on that. Uh, this is one I'm definitely going to get in the future, but there is one that I had in mind. Uh, the Lobo, I was actually thinking about doing the Lobo for this, but it's a little bit more advanced tech than I am aware of and comfortable translating uh, with my current game knowledge. Here we go. All right, so um, 
Sagittarius I done. That was actually the very first, uh, I think, custom card that I did, or one of the very first. It is a monster. Um, I love it, but I'm going to do uh, this other one here, which I actually don't know what it is, um, but uh, we can find that out because I happen to know that the art is from the very talented Anthony Scroggins as... As you can see, all right, we're open in Photoshop now, as we can see in kind of the bottom right-hand corner here. So, uh, and I happen to know where I got this from. So I'm gonna navigate now over to uh, Anthony's DeviantArt page. All right, so let's hop on DeviantArt. And so this is what I do. I definitely wanna make sure that I'm sourcing the artwork well every time, because these guys do amazing work and they're very kind to offer it to the public for free. And so I want to make sure that I'm recognizing them in the in the card as much as I can. But uh, so show me a sword. Let's look. Let's see if we can find this particular illustration. There's some awesome stuff. Kodiak is on my list of things that I want to do. That's an awesome picture of the Atlas. I don't actually have that saved, so I'll come back and grab that later. There, I am not seeing it here. Oh, you know what? This is just in the search. This didn't take me to his page. So I'm going to go to... Uh, Anthony's page, check out the gallery. All right, this is where I pulled it from. All right, so let's find that piece of art. Because I do know he says what the mech is on this art. Future Sagittaire, there we go, Falconer, all right. So the mech is the Falconer. So what I wanna do, I want to pull it up on Sarna because I'm going to be using Sarna for a little bit of the flavor text. I do try to use all the space. I know a lot of the cards in the game, uh, they only use the, uh, they kind of use minimum, so they might have flavor text, but not. There may be a lot of white space. For me, on my custom cards, I want to take advantage of that space. So I'm going to fill it up with the stats. I'm going to put some sweet flavor text in there. That is definitely part of the fun for me. So let's pull it up on Sarna. And then I also want to pull it up on the master units list. Um because I need a little bit of information about, all right, the 8R looks like the standard. So I'm gonna pull up the 8R because I wanna know what affiliations to put it with. And I also wanna know what era that I'm gonna put it in. And so on this, I'll look at production year 3053. So that'll be kind of a late clan evasion card. Um, that 9R might be another variant, a later variant, but let's pull up clan evasion and just see kind of what affiliations this is gonna go for. So we got Comstar, Steiner, and Davian. Um, so that'll probably, you know, three affiliations on a card is kind of, you know, gonna demand a lot of space. So we'll see what happens when we get there. All right, so we know what it is. We know it's the Falconer. Let's go back now to Photoshop. And uh, we've got that, um, that design pulled up there. All right, so now we've got to basically get the art prepped and ready to kind of uh, plug it into the card itself. So generally I find you want to put a little bit extra space on the side, actually we'll do it this way, on the side that it is facing and it doesn't really, you can be pretty tight on the side that it's not facing, all right, just as an aesthetic. So we're going to pull that. So I might just cut to this point for you guys and just kind of skip out all that kind of, you know, that trimming work because it's probably not super interesting for you guys, but we're here, we got the art plugged in and uh, should be ready to go. I think I'm gonna come back and tweak that um, a little bit later, but uh, for now, let's go. So we got the, the name, and which one? We're gonna use FLC8R, FLC. All right, so we got that. Let's fill out some of the details here. All right, 75 tons, ERPPC, four medium lasers, Gauss rifle, Gauss rifle, whatever you call it. I don't know if there is case on this mech or not. We'll find that out later and plug it in if we need to. All right, so we got that. And then next step here is I wanna pull up the, the exact stats and uh, let's start figuring out kind of what these stats are gonna be for this mech. All right, so let's, all right, so I've hopped over to uh, Solaris Skunk Works here and uh, let's pull up this mech. So we got the Falconer, 8R. So this is the easiest way. I could also print out a, a sheet and kind of look at the sheet to kind of as a reference, but uh, here we go. So 585, so we're gonna be a moderate speed mech with jump jets. Um, 
Endo Steel actually doesn't really kind of play into this uh, in terms of stats. You don't see it. It just kind of makes more room for the mech. Double heat sinks of 10. That's going to be important. The armor 11.5 and standard. All right. So those are all going to be kind of helpful stats. And um, we're going to take all that. And then the equipment. I'm also going to go through this. This is really easy too because it allows me to instantly kind of look into where the heat and damage are for each of these. So I can figure out how much which of these weapons are going to go to its primary attack and with what if any weapons need to go into an overheat or an alpha strike this mech's not going to need an alpha strike um so uh so just the overheat and then if it has any other special equipment uh we'll check that as well and then criticals i find that criticals are helpful to figure out if it has case or not um, because it doesn't always show up in this equipment page on Solaris Skunk Works. Um, and sometimes it doesn't show up at all here, and it only shows up in either the TRO or the um, or on Sarna. And so I'll kind of go back and edit if, if I find out it has case. And honestly, right now in the game, the original game, case doesn't have any effect. But I like to put in kind of all these little things uh, just so that if in the future I want to make some house rule that incorporates that or I want to make a card that says, you know, this mech that takes this amount of damage from ammo explosion, except if this mech has case, then it has a modified amount, then I can do that and I don't have to go back and modify it. So uh, for now it's just flare, but in the future it may be useful for, for kind of some kind of card design elements if I'm uh, kind of playing with it in the home game. So, all right, we have that, we have the stats. Let's go to Excel now and figure out what we're gonna do here. So 11.5 armor. All right, so this is just a little uh, very basic. There's nothing fancy about this spreadsheet that I've made up. So I have an inner sphere, and these are just all the notes that I use when I'm making the, the mechs. Um, you know, these are all mechs that I've already kind of made and started out and customized. And uh, I'm gonna plug in the Falconer here because I do keep them in order by weight. I think it was the 8M, 8R, sorry, 8R. All right, so we were at 7.5, and then it was 11.5 for the armor. All right, so now we got to figure out kind of what armor value. Now, it's really easy because I've done other mechs. And the more mechs I do, the easier it is to, to do this step because I have another mech here, the Marauder 3R, which is 7.5 and 11.5. And so I don't have to think. I can just go. Assume I did my math right the first time. So this mech is going to be a 2.7. Um, one way I do use to figure out the armor versus the structure is I think about PPC hits. You know, basically there should be one armor uh, for every PPC hit that mech can take into the chest and the center torso without it going critical. It's just a really easy way for me to kind of figure out to kind of check my work. Um, sometimes I'll do, uh, I might kind of do every 11 or 12. Um, uh, so it would, you have to be around 36 to get up to three armor. You'd have to be uh, in the mid 40s usually to get the four armor. So generally only kind of things like the Atlas Direwolf are getting up to four armor. But that's just kind of a rough way of how I do it. When I first started this out, I basically just created a standard. I basically just kind of reverse engineered from the uh, mechs in the game um, that were already there, things like the Man of War, things like the Fenris, and just kind of reverse engineered about how much armor and structure that it, um, that mech got based on how much uh, armor that it had affiliated between its internal structure and external structure. And I am accounting for both in this. I know the game only does like total armor value, but uh, I'm not really limited by what the, the original game does, right? I don't care. Um, I think what Michael calls it like the revolutionary. So uh, I really don't care uh, kind of what limitations the original game is placing out there. I'm having fun. These are my cards. I'm gonna do what I want and I'm gonna keep it so where it can integrate and play with that original game, but I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna kind of change a flair or make my card less fun or less playable because some old rule is telling me to do so. So a little insight into kind of the thought process there. All right, but we have um, two seven there and then let's figure out weapons. And so we had one ER PPC. We had four medium lasers and then one Gauss rifle. All right, and then double checking that, I can't remember what type of medium laser, so I'm gonna hop into the other program without changing the video. So it's just a standard medium laser and we'll go. And so what I normally do here is this first column is gonna be their primary attack and the second column once I figure it out is going to be any overheat attack and then the third one will be an alpha strike. So I'll just plug the weapons into whatever column there is appropriate. Uh, and we'll figure out here. And now this column is the heat uh, mitigation. So we're gonna figure out how many heat sinks this mech has. 
uh, it has 10 double heat sinks and so that will be negative 20 all right so now i want to figure out how much uh weapons that it can use uh before it kind of pushes out of that negative 20. all right so we have a All right, back into Solaris Skunk Works. Let's look here. All right, so where the Gauss Rifle is definitely gonna get fired in its primary, all right? There's almost no heat there. Uh, and Gauss Rifle doesn't get kicked into Alpha Strike. Um, so we have um, heat one, it's always low, ERPPC heat 15. So we have, we're at 16 heat there. And we're working with 20 uh, for our primary attack. Uh, the medium laser is three. Um, I know the game doesn't account for a movement heat, but I do, you know, when I'm doing it. So I generally kind of take into account that one or two. I leave a little bit of uh, one or two in that primary um, heat mitigation, uh, that primary attack value to make sure that it can move and shoot. Um, so we got, it looks like we, we can fire an ERPPC, a medium laser, and a Gauss rifle in that primary attack. And so now we're going to figure out what damage. And now in the, in the game and in the formula that Michael's come up with, the, uh, there is a scaling for the damage uh, based on the range of the weapon, assuming that you're gonna fire your longer range weapons more frequently than your shorter range weapons. I kind of throw that away because my experience in the tabletop game is usually you're getting into that medium range for most weapons uh, or to the short range pretty quickly unless you have a mech that's specifically designed for long range. And for me, I figure that long range value is going to encompass that long range ability uh, for the weapons. And so for me, long range, the way I figured out is any weapon that can, that can uh, achieve hit whose range exceeds 21, 21 being kind of the, the uh, max range for intersphere LRMs, then basically if they can shoot you outside of the maximum range of the longest range weapon of standard intersphere, then I call that long range. And then I'll give one long range point for every weapon that can do that. So in this one, we have an ERPPC and we have a Gauss rifle. So this mech is gonna get a long range of two, all right? But then we need to figure out what that attack value is, all right? And so I'm not scaling it for, for distance because it's very, very rare that a mech is going to be able to hold itself in a range where it can fire and the other mech can't uh, for more than a round or two. Um, and so I just don't think it's worth it. Now, I do take special considerations for weapons that are very short range. Um, so if, say, a mech has uh, a mech like the Burrock, uh, which I talked about on the CCG page, which all its weapons, I think the max range for its weapons is like 12 because it's all really short. It's like heavy, medium lasers and stuff like that. Um, I just kind of, I, I tweak with it and add little abilities to kind of reflect the fact that that mech uh, can't target people that are longer range. All right, so we'll deal with that later. But, um, so this is gonna have a long range too when we get back to the card. The medium lasers are uh, five damage, all right? So we got 10 from the PPC, we're at 15, and then 30 for the Gauss rifle. So we're at 30, and I do a, a seven multiple, all right? So essentially seven is a number that I've used a lot with this. Um, seven um, will, is, goes to 28 on this, so we got 28 damage. Uh, within that 30, I always round down, I don't round up, unless I have some really mitigating circumstance for doing so. So this is gonna be a primary attack of four. All right, so let's go back into Photoshop and fill that in. Primary attack of four, and we figured out that the, uh, the speed is gonna be moderate. So I can kind of play with the, the template here, this awesome template that Justin Case made. Um, Justin's in the group. Uh, this is awesome. You know, what you what you did here, Justin, uh, this is a ton of fun to play with. And uh, thanks to Michael Todd, who Justin originally made this for. Uh, Michael Todd had his unseen uh, custom set of cards that's out there in the ethernet. Uh, you can find it, look up Michael Todd Unseen, or you can go to the podcast I did with Michael Todd and I linked it in the show notes. But, um, but yeah, it's, I mean, this awesome work uh, that they did. And Justin's actually helping me. Uh, he's going to help me make a custom little watermark for, uh, Renegade HVG. It's just going to be an HBG and then a little custom, uh, kind of rarity symbol, uh, there. 
Um, and uh, and that'll be a, a little HPG station. So super cool there. And we're gonna do some other little tweaks there um, that will kind of tease. I'm actually I'm gonna add another speed uh, speed threshold. Um, I don't like the dash ability. I think the dash ability is a problem in the game. Uh, I think it breaks a fundamental game mechanic that you have to build a mech and then deploy to the troll area. Um, you know, whether I'm right or wrong, I don't know, I'll play test it, whatever. But uh, what I want to do instead of adding that dash ability for the super fast max is just have an XF speed. All right, so just have another speed tier uh, there. And Justin's going to help me kind of tweak the template a little bit so I can add that. And I'll actually have an, an XS, an extra slow for things like the urban mech. It's really just the urban mech, I think, uh, that has that extra slow. But I want to do that instead of kind of having that kind of clunky um that clicking language on the card i think you know if you can kind of make you know clean in your symbols in the card way better than having text all right and that's why for a lot of the abilities that the old game i've just kind of made up uh, little little text uh, little abilities in there uh, something like cool jump and so some of the mechs uh, can actually jump uh, and fire all the weapons and still not cross their their heat mitigation threshold and so I give those mechs a cool jump and what the cool jump does is it just allows the mech to get that plus one initiative without uh, um, it affecting the attack, all right? Otherwise, the mech, we're assuming that it's attacking, it's decreasing the amount of heat capacity that's available for that primary weapons attack, and so that's where you're getting that negative one. But that's just an example of kind of what I've done with that to make uh, the language a little bit simpler and just add in little kind of keywords. But we're here, we got the falconer. Um, while I'm here, let's go ahead and change that illustrator credit to Anthony. Got to give credit where it's due because uh, this is awesome work. And I want to make sure that we recognize it. And I think we settled on a 2.7, but we have that there. Um, we need to change this text here. And this is another kind of uh, change that I've made is uh, changing the, the split between unit, omni, mech, just because I can. You know, I'm not beholden to kind of other conventions. And, uh, I think it looks better. So the rule of cool is absolutely number one for all of my customs. So if um, I need to change something to make it look better, then I'm gonna do that. I think it said Comstar on this too, which is weird. I'll have to look into that. This is a lot. I haven't actually done a card where I had three different affiliations. It's a lot of, a lot of text there. And I had to actually delete the rarity symbol, the, the what would be the expansion symbol, in order to accommodate it, which obviously I don't like to do. But rule of cool, if it looks better, do it. So we'll come back. So we've got most of this fixed so far and ready to go. All right, so let's go back to the stats. All right, so let's check out the, um, the damage these... Um, weapons are putting out in excess of that original attack value. So remember we got a little, we got two left over from the original. So we can add that into whatever we're doing for the overheat as well. Um, and then the heat that we did, uh, we built up was at 16, was three, that was 19. And so let's say we have a one bleed overheat, assuming that the mech is going to run every once in a while. So uh, we may or may not use that, uh, it doesn't, uh, we'll see. But we have three medium lasers, all right? So three medium lasers are gonna be in the overheat. So that is 15 damage. Like I said before, um, it is um, a, dip, a multiple of seven that I'm using for that. So 15, uh, plus we had two left over. That brings us up to 18. So you have kind of a, um, a decision to make here. Do you wanna round down and give it a two overheat damage or do you wanna round up to 21 and give it a three? Uh, you're right there in the middle there. Um, I'm gonna probably err on the conservative side here and round it down, all right? But I might go back later and round it up, um, who knows? So it's gonna be a two overheat damage and then we need to figure out how much over he actual heat it's gonna generate on that. It's three medium lasers, so that's nine heat. Uh, we're gonna divide that by five, um, so that's gonna be two, all right? So two, uh, two overheat for plus two, nice and easy. It's always good when you can get an overheat that uh, that doesn't damage your mech. All right, so that's what we're gonna have here. Uh, we can delete this missile. He will have a long range. I'm gonna go ahead and move. I might just cut here and kind of move this around so you guys aren't kind of seeing all the little 
the little parts that don't matter. But maybe it will. Um, all right, I think we got everything accounted for there. We got that long range too. We got the jump. We got the overheat. Um, I don't list the jump, uh, the, the text for the jump. I figure that anybody that has the rules can look and knows what the jump is. Again, rule of cool. Go with what looks better uh, when you're making custom cards for your own use. So I think we've got all that. Let's, uh, let's plug in then my notes just so that I know what I did in the past. So that was uh, 19 was the heat and then the attack value that I came up with was was four and then I can't remember what the total damage was it was 20 it was 30 all right so we're gonna plug 30 in there whoops so that I know where the damage is and then the heat uh, was accounted for there and then we had a little bit of bleed over uh, this is where I put the overheat I ended up with two and two uh, the overheat heat was nine the overheat uh, damage uh, was 15 from the medium lasers. Let's say 15, I have to spell out plus, plus two. All right, so 17. All right, so we're three over, but uh, four short of being a three damage. And then we can go over here and I'm going to differentiate uh, what weapons are in primary and what are in secondary for my spreadsheet for later. And then we're back to the card. All right, so double check that. I got the two seven, the four, two plus two, long range two. We have jump. It's a regular jump, not a cool jump. The speed was medium, right? Cause this was a five, eight, five. Yep, just double check that. And then the affiliation based on the Based on the master unit list, we had Comstar, Federer Commonwealth, which is gonna be a Steiner Davian. Um, we don't put the, the mercenary units in there. Um, so that's it, all right? So I think we got everything there. We do want to hop back over to Sarna because we're gonna to want to find some flavor text for this baby, all right? So I won't kind of have you guys sit and watch this whole thing, but basically I just kind of read through Sarna and kind of pick out uh, um, a line or two that looks really sweet um, that I think can kind of spark the imagination of a new player. Uh, so anything that kind of references other things in the lore, um, I'll, I'll definitely favor that uh, because it just uh, kind of makes them think, oh, it, what's the Exodus or what's the, the Civil War? Or what's the Jihad or what's the, uh, you know, this was the first battle mech, you know, what was it? And so kind of I'll, I'll put that in there so that just kind of people, it kind of wets their palate per se, you know, in case, uh, you know, they're finding the game and they would want to play the card. but. Let's go through here. Let's find something that looks good. And just reading through, uh, you know, that first line kind of, you know, is about as good as we get. You know, a lot of stuff is just talking about kind of the design and what's in there. Uh, but uh, the Falconer was designed at the Order of Hunstavian to create a mech that could tame the Jade Falcons and defeat a Clant Omni mech in one-on-one -on -one combat. That looks good. I like it. All right. People are like, oh, who's Hunstavian? You know, oh, Jade Falcons. Oh, well, you know, they can defeat a Clant Omni mech. So, I don't know. It's cool. All right, and so there we go. Uh, the text is in. Now what we need to focus on is the costing for this mech, all right? Because it's definitely not a non-cost like that uh, dire wolf, all right? But uh, I have a spreadsheet that Michael was kind enough to show, uh, share with me. And uh, let's go ahead and hop over to that now. All right, so this is an amazing document that Michael made and again, was kind enough to share with me. Uh, basically, it is a comprehensive explanation of all the costing and all the formulas. It's really an incredible piece of work and kind of a testament to Michael's commitment to uh, to this game and, uh, and his um, peers' work, him and Chester and the other guys that are working on Battletech Tactics to, to get that game available um, to kind of as an homage and as expansion for the original CCG. So if you're not familiar with that, definitely kind of inquire on the page, on the Battletech CCG Facebook page about what it is, and they will be happy to share that with you. But I've got all of the stats plugged in here, and uh, and it kind of whips out the formula, all right? And so this, this is a formula with a lot of so this is a formula that is very loyal to the original costing with a couple tweaks for things that were just grossly wrong, all right? And so um, I will note that I don't, I'm not married to this formula, but I 
definitely use it as a guide. And what will ultimately uh, kind of guide my decisions is what I'll do is I'll just take other cards in the game that I know are good and are viable and playable, um, and I'll just compare my cards to them, all right? And so things like, you know, the Fenris Prime, things like the Manowar Prime, uh, things like the Centurion D, things like the Mongoose, you know, these cards that we know are good in the game, I'll take my card and I'll compare it to that card and, and I'll figure out, okay, well, how does my card stack up? Is my card also viable? And so I want my cards to be viable as well. And ultimately, uh, I'm gonna play test them eventually. And I think play testing is the ultimate deciding factor of where a card's value uh, should come from. And so what I initially publish and what is on the costing of a card that I share with the group or on the Patreon for Renegade HPG, that's really, um, that's not final, all right? So final, it can always be changed. It's a custom card. So why wouldn't I change it if I wanted to in the future? So that's it. So we're at 6.67. Um, so yeah, so I'd round that down to six. So I'm gonna say to start with, this is a six mech. All right, and we got the six plugged in and now we got the, the <laughs> buyouts, all right? And this is gonna be tricky, all right? So this mech, I don't think it's, it definitely doesn't need a P buyout. Um, I did that just for the Dire Wolf. It doesn't need a T because it doesn't have any advanced equipment, things like Beagle Active Pro, ECM, whatnot. Um, L, generally L is reserved for the bigger mechs. This is a, a bigger mech at uh, 75 tons, but it's not huge. And so I'm not gonna use an L. Um, I will also note that sometimes I will use that L to justify a lower base cost for the really big units, all right? Because again, I want it to be playable, all right? And so I'll say, well, I'll add a P or add an L um, if the kind of mech and lore would justify it um, just to make it more challenging to get out. Certainly you can do, have things like Comstar support um, to, to kind of get around that or Trial of Grievance to get around that. But I also figure that if you're using those other cards to get around that other buyout that I've kind of used to kind of cheat the formula, you're basically sacrificing a card and possibly a deployment in order to get this card out and to cover that extra base cost. So I think it's uh, it justifies it. But again, playtesting would decide that. This is a custom game. I'm not trying to sell this stuff. So let's switch these around. Let's get that in there. I'm going to use M as a buyout on any mech that uses munitions, all right? And this is definitely a deviation from the game, um, but in my head, it makes sense, all right? Mech has munitions for every distinct type of munitions. It has a one munitions buyout, all right? This has a Gauss rifle. That's gonna give it a one M buyout. We're good there, all right? For the A, everybody has A in their deck. It's really just superfluous, um, but uh, I will actually, it's not superfluous if you take it out. So either you have it in or you have it out, all right? If you have it in on a small mech, then basically it might slow down um, your initial kind of deployments, all right? And so if you have A on a mech that's a one cost, then uh, basically it's gonna require you to, to, to put enough A in your deck that you're gonna draw on A from your opening hand, play it, and go, all right? And so in that sense, it's important. You know, if a mech has no A buyout, then you're not dependent upon drawing that A in your initial hand. So you might not need to put as many A's in your deck in order to ensure that you get it on that initial draw. So that's it. But for the bigger mechs, once you get to four or five, like the A, you're gonna have A out, all right? It's extremely unlikely. So really, I just do this just for funsies. Uh, let's call this 2A. I might change it. If I see another mech in the game that's similar to the Falconer here and it has 3A, then I'll put 3A. But really, it's just flavor. It doesn't matter. But that's it, all right? So uh, here we go. We got the Falconer FLC-8R. Uh, we got our cost, six, uh, six base, 2A1M. Um, Davian Steiner, Comstar affiliation, moderate speed, overheat, two plus two attack, long range two jump, standard jump, some nice little flavor text in there, primary attack four, two seven. There is one more step with this that I'm gonna do, um, actually, and I'm going to kind of pull out my, my stack of cards that I know are good and viable in the game. Basically, I've got a stack of all the cards that have been in world championship decks, assuming that if a world champion put it in their deck, that it is a good card. And I'm going to take it, and I'm gonna find something that's similar to this, and I'm just gonna compare the stats, all right? So we can start with the Man of War Prime. 
All right, Mana Aura Prime is the five base, four attack. I'm also four attack. It has three armor instead of two, um, but it doesn't have all the overheat, long range, whatnot. The speed is the same. And so here we go with our questions, all right? So we lost an armor, so it should be maybe one cheaper. That brings it down to a four. But then you have overheat, long range, and jump. And then does that justify a two cost? I think it does. And so I think we're in a good range for that six. I'll find another card that's also kind of good. All right, let's look at the Black Hawk. All right, so the Black Hawk is in a lot of those kind of top decks early on. Five cost, three base attack, two eight. All right, seven versus eight structure, that's pretty much the same. I think we can ignore that. Um, the four base attack on mine, so on the Black Hawk, the one more of the attack is in the overheat, so that would make the Falconer a little bit more pricey. Um, so it's not straight comparison, and the Falconer is a moderate speed versus slow, all right? So that's gonna add one, so it's gonna go five to a six just because of the speed. And then we're looking at transferring the, the attack in and all those other abilities. So say, this is kind of saying maybe seven would be more appropriate, all right? So we have one saying six, maybe one saying seven, but I will say that the Mana War is a much more solid card uh, in, than the Black Hawk is, and so maybe um, that's gonna be okay. And then kind of the final kind of benchmark standard is the Fenris Prime, which I always like to use. So Fenris Prime is a little bit harder to compare because it's so much different. Um, it's got three base attack, so let's add one. So Fenris Prime is a three. Um, so we're gonna add one because we got four. We're gonna subtract one because our speed is moderate instead of fast, so we're back down to three. And then we're gonna add one armor, so we're up to four. And then we add the overheat, long range, and jump. I think those are worth about two, so that puts us at six, so we're right on, all right? So two of those comparisons say six is appropriate, one of them says seven. We're gonna go with six, toss it to play testing, and let that uh, decide what's gonna happen at the end. But that's it, so that completes the build process for me of how I come up with a custom card. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you want more like it, let me know. Throw some comments down below, give the video a like, share it with other card players, and, uh, and definitely, definitely consider hopping over to the Patreon for Renegade HPG, throwing some bu couple bucks a month uh, to kind of helping me support this content. You know, honestly, if like 10 people gave three bucks a month, which is less than a cup of coffee, that would be awesome. Uh, that would certainly justify me making one of these a month and, uh, and kind of sharing it with you guys. So please consider helping out in that way. Otherwise, keep playing, share the video if that helps as well. And before you navigate away though, definitely stick around for another 20 seconds or so. I'm gonna pop up some amazing new artwork by Aldonius Rex who just has produced some really quality Battletech illustrations and there's gonna be some info there for how to find more that he's producing and get to his site to maybe buy some prints for your own office or game room.